films are a perfect form for expressing what's inside an individual's mind. Some creators prefer animation, others prefer gritty live action, and select others ride the line between the two. Visionary directors like Terry Gilliam have a hard time choosing between animation and live action and ultimately decide to merge the two worlds. Gilliam involves the world of animation in the realm of live action by utilizing elements of mise-en-scene through performance, set design, costuming, etc., and cinematography. The infamous Monty Python animator shows his love and literacy for cartoonish absurdity through live-action sci-fi and fantasy films like The Zero Theorem and The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. In Paul Wells' 2002 book Animation in America, theorist William Kozlenko believes that animation ultimately requires acceptance not interpretation and that it is only escapism. He might be confused by someone like Gilliam, and sure where to put him on this spectrum with animation on one side and live action on the other. While Wells thinks there is room for animation in the evolving premises of modernity, which surely includes film, where does Gilliam fit? While there is certainly a level of fantastical logic that requires acceptance in Gilliam's films, there is also room for interpretation. There is a level of experimentation in his work that embraces the cartoon aesthetic, like bright colors and plasmatic worlds, as well as highlights influences from German Expressionism. While his work is not everyone's favorite, Gilliam is a director who makes films for himself and his fans rather than for the corporation that is Hollywood, a mentality that animators at Warner Brothers embraced wholeheartedly, if Hollywood were replaced with Disney. One idea from the Expressionistic movement states, that films must be drawings brought to life involving dynamics of the surreal. Even in a largely live-action film, this idea can be implemented. For example, in Imaginarium, let's forget for a moment the obviously surrealistic Dr. Sushan world that represents characters subconscious in the film and focus on the unexpected death of Heath Ledger, in the late stages of filming and what it allowed Gilliam to do. This tragedy certainly could have stopped the film in its tracks, but Gilliam decided to use three other actors. Jude Law. A really unique situation. I can't think of this ever happening before. And it's a really positive demonstration to me of the, the kind of community of film. And it seemed fitting that Heath's work was respected and continued. And also for me, as a huge fan of Terry's, that his film was completed. Johnny Depp. Uh, it was such a, I mean, utter devastation, obviously, to his family and uh, family and friends. But, and Gilliam was kind of... Stuck. And Colin Farrell. And then Colin Farrell, which is a fantastic idea from Margie Simpkin, a very dear friend of Terry's, who's a casting director. To represent Ledger's character, Tony, on the other side of Parnassus' mirror rather than a computer generated composite of Ledger. This is successful because implementing this idea bolsters the message behind the film concerning the surreal power of the imagination and its lack of boundaries, which also echoes the sentiment behind animation. This change is also successful due to the three replacement actors' performances and their flawless renditions of the Tony that Ledger had previously established. All of this combined makes it easier for the viewer to suspend belief and accept the jarring change. Any other live-action film would be hard-pressed to pull off such a feat. Imagine a film like Goodfellas and Joe Pesci being replaced in the middle of it. It wouldn't work. It would be an entirely different and unsuccessful movie. Attacking Imaginarium's issue in this fashion is brilliant, even using the serious scenario as comic relief. For example, at times characters say it's not him or who are you, which plays true to Kozlenko's belief that animation can be used as pure escapism. On the other hand, Kozlenko says there is only room for acceptance and not interpretation in animation. This does not hold true in Gilliam's films. Even if the audience accepts this casting change in Imaginarium, it might still not make sense and therefore some extra digging is required. There is a point that is hit on in the film, where if two people go through the mirror, one imagination may be stronger than the other. Using this logic, it is perfectly feasible that Tony could look different in someone else's imagination. Similarly, it's easier to believe that the middle-aged shopping lady can be dreaming of Johnny Depp, and not Heath Ledger. As mentioned before, they don't try to hide the fact that he is different every time, they even call attention to it. There are a few semi-meta lines, like in Depp's scene. Rudolph Valentino. Okay. 
Prince Dean. Princess Di. All these people. They're all dead. Yes. But immortal, nevertheless. They won't get old or fat. They won't get sick or feeble. They are beyond fear because they are forever young. They are gods. And you can join them. You're such a wonderful speaker. I know. Nothing's permanent. Not even death. Gilliam and his crew discovered a way, through using their imaginations, to cheat Ledger's death and continue the film. It is reflexive in the sense that they are openly showcasing their feet, saying ha ha, look what we did, which is a tool that is true to the animations of Clampett, Tashlin, and other classic animators. Then of course, there is the actual surrealistic depiction of the subconscious where the world inside the mirror forms to the person with the strongest imagination, where the homage to expressionism is most apparent. The shopping lady's mind, where gigantic shoes and pretty baubles litter the frame, is exceedingly different from Tony's, when he runs into the mirror to hide from the brutes coming after him. His imagination is the most cartoonish of them all, and serves as a perfect example of this bond between live action and animation. In Tony's world, mechanics that belong to the realm of animation almost always come into play. Gilliam not only uses his actors to help portray what's in his head, but his settings as well. In the Zero Theorem, characteristics of animation shine through the mise-en-scene that Gilliam and others have created. It is in the bright neon colors and surrealist qualities of this live-action world, which echo animators like Chuck Jones, or Tex Avery. When Cohen, played by Christoph Waltz, walks to work at the beginning of the film, the colors and sounds of his world combined with real-world concepts, such as homelessness, overbearing advertising, work, etc., allow the viewer to realize that this world is not our own, a possible future one perhaps, but not exactly the world as we know it. It is a plasmatic world that exists simply to get Gilliam's vision across, an idea that is prevalent in animation. The surrealistic vision continues at Cohen's office, Mancom. People get around by roller skating, color is everywhere and there is constant movement in the frame. It is a very mannequin cartoonish setting, an environment that only sci-fi or fantasy can provide and one in which lies very close to Gilliam's heart. There's a side of me that always fell for manic things, frenzied, cartoony performances, he says. The world of animation is never far away in a Gilliam film, according to Kozlenko. The absolute promise of animation lies in its claims to be free from the restrictions of an oppressive reality. Going back to the concept of animation and escapism, there are a few scenes where Cohen is in a virtual reality created by Bainsley, played by Melanie Thierry, a setting created solely for relaxation, an escape from the daily world, while also representing the beauty of the mind and what it is capable of creating. The beach setting is tranquil, a serene place where Cohen can let go and be happy. Animation, whether CGI or traditional hand-drawn, does indeed offer a respite from the ordinary. However, it does not always adhere to fantasy logic. The rules of Bainsley's VR are much like the real world. Both characters can still be hurt here, and both can still succumb to human emotions. While one VR scene is romantic, there is another scene where Cohen is overwhelmed by emotion and tries to force himself on Bainsley. It seems that Kozlenko's promise concerning animation is not absolute at all. While the virtual reality is supposed to serve as an escape, there is still the unjust very real reality that humans can be negatively controlled by their emotions. Gilliam's camera techniques are unique and further lend to the animated feel of his live-action films. In Zero Theorem, the camera is almost another manic character. It searches for Cohen when he goes to Joby's party and quickly sweeps in on him a close chokehold of a shot that emphasizes his overwhelmed and claustrophobic feelings, but then quickly glides back into a medium shot. Other times, even though the camera is static, it appears to be breathing, allowing an ever-moving frame. This technique, called a moving hold, goes back to the Fleischers and Betty Boop cartoons. 
Like many the Mucha where the lines are constantly moving. The constant movement keeps the viewer engaged, ready for anything, and is a perfect accompaniment to Cohen's character. In Gilliam's films, he wants to show how the real world can coexist with fantasy. In Imaginarium, the first time the audience sees the troupe they are in a real world setting, but we are quickly transported to the realm of imagination, when the drunk guy runs after Valentina into the mirror world. While still live action, animation antics are employed here, as they often are inside the mirror. There are aspects of Gilliam's work that echo the rules that Kozlenko believes animation follows, such as escapism, but there are many instances where it does not, namely where interpretation is involved. So, where does Terry Gilliam fit on the spectrum? Well says that animation is a child of the modernist principle, and is concerned with consistently evolving premises of modernity, which seems to leave room for this postmodern marriage of animation and live action that Gilliam loves doing. Given his background, the iconic director knows what the medium is capable of, and he showcases what it can do in settings that no one has thought of or seen before. He emboldens the idea that animation can complement live action, by using concepts of animation, through the mise-en-scene, and brilliant camera techniques. He acknowledges that animation is more capable of depicting some instances, and indeed might be the only way to adequately depict what's inside one's head in a film like Imaginarium. It is for this exact reason that Gilliam fits somewhere in between these worlds, in a world all his own.